Hi, everyone. First off, thanks so much for having me today. Um, my name is Marley Burr, and I'm a senior product manager on the Onyx Digital Assets team at JP Morgan. So today I'm going to be walking you through all uh, what Onyx Digital Assets is, our approach to tokenization, and our live applications on our network today. So what is ODA? ODA is JP Morgan's premier enterprise permission network for the exchange and settlement of on-chain assets and cash. Ooh, I keep switching this, sorry. Um, so ODA has a uh, regulated fiat payment mechanism which enables delivery versus payment. And uh, because we are a platform, I don't know why this keeps switching, sorry. Um, because we are a platform, we are building out the infrastructure and components uh, and tools necessary to allow others to build on our network. And we are product builders ourselves, um, or sorry, app builders ourselves. I think this might be on like a timer to switch, but I'll just keep switching it back. Um, so we are app builders ourselves, so we are focused on building out our own suite of use cases for our clients. Um, <laughs> all right. So, um, all right, so we are permissioned, we are permissioned blockchain network, so what that means is that um, no cryptocurrency is necessary for the operation of the network. All right, you're gonna come help me out. We have to have technical, it's all about the fun. We're still there, this one. Okay, all right, cool, we're back in action. All right, um, hopefully that works. So, yep, no cryptocurrency necessary, and it's still doing this. Um, <laughs> Um, but uh, because we're built within the walls of JP Morgan, um, what that means is that our software is subject to the same uh, safety, cybersecurity, and resiliency scrutiny that any other um, software at the bank would be subject to. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the next slide. So uh, ODA is a part of the Onyx business unit at JP Morgan. Um, so within this business unit, we have four subdivisions. So Onyx Digital Assets, of course, we have JPM Coin Systems, which focuses on on-chain payment solutions. We have Link, which focuses on data exchange. And finally, we have the Blockchain Launch Team, which is our R&D lab, which builds out use cases we think are going to be important for the bank in the next five years or so. So Onyx was launched in 2020, but I think it's important to mention that our blockchain program has been around since 2016. So uh, to dig in a little bit more around Onyx Digital Assets, I first think it's important to level set on a few, set, uh, a few stats, just so you get an idea of what the usage of the platform looks like today. So to date, um, our, our uh, oh my gosh, okay. Today, our, um, our ODA was launched in late 2020 with Onyx, um, and today we have done over a trillion dollars worth of uh, value exchange in assets and cash. Um, with about one to two billion being exchanged uh, by our clients each day. Um, and I think, uh, okay, so what are we focused on at ODA? So we are really focused on building out products that enable asset owners to do more with their assets. So, and, and we really leverage tokenization as a tool for that. So tokenization on its own doesn't create new utility for assets. It's really the products that we build around those on-chain assets. That's where the magic happens. Um, so that's what we're focused on. And, um, and so every time we're onboarding an asset onto the network, uh, we, are, we are typically focused on a specific use case that that asset will be inter interacting with. So before I move on, I want to touch on why bringing assets um, onto a blockchain ecosystem can open up the door for new use cases for it. So if we think about the way things work today, assets are record kept by various different institutions like transfer agents and custodians, for example. And those institutions have various different roles and responsibilities around those assets. 
And, um, and, and, and sometimes they, they often offer other services as well, like tri-party tri services, for, as an example. So, um, so we have these various different institutions handling, handling assets. And then uh, banks are handling um, uh, ownership, tracking ownership of cash. So even if we just stop right there, because we have assets and cash being record kept by two different systems, if you have a trade that's involving both of those things, which is a usual thing that's happening, um, we can't settle that trade faster than T plus one typically. And for all of the businesses that are involved in, in, in assets and, and sort of interacting with assets that fall outside of the scope of what of these record keeping institutions offer, those are being done by other, count, other counterparties um, and, and their systems, and that just creates another layer of, um, of reconciliation and creates more latency in this ecosystem. So you probably get the point that I'm trying to make, which is that our ecosystem is very fragmented right now. And bringing together all of these separate ledgers into together is very difficult and very expensive. And the result is that we can do less with our assets, and the utility around those assets is more or less limited by the core competencies and business models of these record-keeping institutions and related intermediaries. So how is Onyx Digital Assets trying to address this? Well, we're trying to build towards a future where assets and cash can be, uh, can be brought together in one system and record kept together, and where we can build business applications to interact with those assets and cash um, on this unified ledger. And where the builder of these applications don't need to just be the operator of the system, but can be other qualified builders as well. And of course, we're building this new system um, you know, we're not looking to, we're trying to achieve this, right, not by replacing the old, um, you know, traditional in institutions that have a lot of responsibilities around these assets. But what we're trying to do is build a new system on top of the old one, leveraging tokenization as a tool. And of course, doing this with blockchain technology with the ultimate goal of the participants in the system able to hold a copy of it so that we can build towards a more transparent financial ecosystem. So with that, I will talk about our live applications on our network. So the first application I'll speak with you today about is called digital financing. You'll notice at JP Morgan, we're not very good at coming up with new interesting names. We kind of name things um, we name them exactly what they do, like, you get the point. Anyway, um, so digital financing uh, was launched in 2020 and it enables borrowers to access intraday secured financing through repurchase agreements or repos. So prior to the creation of this application, it really wasn't feasible to uh, access intraday liquidity on a secured basis. And, and so if you're a short-term borrower and you need cash during the day, you're probably just going to go draw down on your credit line at a bank. But there are a few considerations with that. So first is obviously it's unsecured. Uh, typically these credit lines are uncommitted, meaning they're not guaranteed to always be there. And uh, so in some instances they can be quite expensive. So of course these, um, these considerations are not weighted equally for everybody, all these short-term borrowers. But if we think about who the biggest short-term borrowers are in the market, uh, broker dealers are near the top of that list. So if you're a broker dealer and you're accessing a, um, a credit line, often drawing down on that a lot, you could be, uh, you could be, um, you could have to hold higher capital, uh, you'll have ca higher capital requirements, uh, potentially. Now on the lender side, um, if you are a bank that's giving out a lot of unsecured financing on a, on a daily basis, you could also be subject to higher capital requirements. It to, in, to ensure that if, you, if uh, there was a stress event or you know, a, a several defaults that you could um, still continue your operations and meet your obligations. So how is digital financing actually addressing this problem? So what, what uh, borrowers can do on the application is actually uh, create a balance of tokens that represent a uh, underlying held at a, a special account um, at a regular way traditional um, institution like a custodian. And while these tokens are represented on chain, the, 
those assets that are held in the underlying account cannot be unilaterally moved out of the account, and that's to ensure that there's no double spend of the asset while the tokens are on, on chain. And so, um, and so they create this balance of, of tokens that are representative, you know, call it U.S. treasuries. Um, and then on the other side of, of that transaction, um, the lender will create a balance of cash leveraging the JPM coin system solution that we have de deployed on ODA. And then both, um, both counterparties can agree on trade terms like amount, settlement time, maturity time, and interest rate, and then go ahead and execute that transaction. Now, at settlement time, what will happen is the, um, the cash and the assets will s switch between the counterparties, and then the borrower can access that cash just like they would a regular way uh, deposit account. Come maturity time, they will create a new balance of cash. Uh, typically, that will just be the amount of the trade, the notional of the trade, plus some interest that has accrued over the duration of, of, the, of the trade. And then at settlement time, the assets and cash will swap back. So what's really interesting about this is because we are executing on the terms of the trade leveraging code that's deployed on ODA, we're able to ensure that mature, or settlement and maturity happen atomically, which means that one leg of the trade will never go through without the other one being successful. And in addition to that, we can ensure there's precision of settlement time and maturity time. Um, so you know, we know that there's going to the trade is going to settle at this point in time, and it will it, it will end at this point in time. And that's another feature of digital financing that really wasn't feasible prior to the creation of it. Um, so again, because we're able to bring both cash and assets onto the same system, we're able to reduce a lot of the friction seen in the traditional market. And so borrowers can access secured financing for a few hours if they want, um, or minutes even. And because interest is calculated on a minutely basis, they only pay for what they need. So I will quickly go through the next application, super, super quick. So um, this is called the tokenized collateral network. I did say we were bad at naming things. Um, or we'll con we can call it the TCN for short. So the TCN uh, enables collateral providers to post tokenized assets or on-chain assets to their counterparties as margin. So the first, uh, the first asset class that we focused on for this, um, for this application was money market fund units. So money market funds are typically used just as an investment. And what a lot of investors do will, is they will invest in a money market fund overnight. And then come the morning, they will um, pull their money out of the fund and leverage that cash to meet a margin call. Um, and now if we jump back to the collateral piece for just a second, so, um, so, uh, on the, from a collateral receiver's perspective, um, collateral receivers typically want to receive either cash or U.S. or um, other high-quality assets like U.S. Treasuries. So, um, so sorry, I'm getting so distracted by this. I also realize it's probably my fault because there's like it's moving on its own. But anyway, um, so uh, sorry. So. Um, they want to receive either uh, high quality assets like U.S. Treasuries or cash. Um, now, if we think about money market fund units, um, certain money market funds could certainly be considered high quality assets, um, but the infrastructure around uh, collateral management and um, the record keeping, uh, record keeping systems for money market fund ownership just don't enable those types of assets to be leveraged as collateral. And so what the TCN enables, um, enables users to do is actually create a balance of, of um, tokens that represent a security interest in the underlying money market fund units held at a special account within the TA. And then they're able to post those as, um, as collateral to their counterparties. Now importantly, um, you know, because uh, money market funds are record kept at a uh, transfer agent. Transfer agents just aren't in the business of moving units from account to account for the purposes of margin. That's just not the, the business that they're in. And not just anyone can go and open up an account at a TA and receive money market fund units into it. You have to be an investor of the fund to do so. And so what the TCN enables users to do is actually use these assets 
in a way that just were not possible before because of that infrastructure um, around, around the asset. And we think that this is a super powerful example of how bringing assets on chain can open up new use cases for them. Um, so with that, I thank you all so much for your time and patience as the, as the presentation was not cooperating, but thank you so much again for your time. <laughs>